হচ্ছে না দেখা যাচ্ছে দেখো ভিডিওতে দেখো ওখানে দিয়েছি যে আমি দেখো একদম ঠিকঠাকই লিখেছি কিন্তু তারপরেও এইরকম দেখাচ্ছে হ্যালো তুমি কি নামে পড়েছো দেখো তো লাইভ আসছে কি না এবার ঠিক আছে যখন যে বক্তা বলবে নাকি তখন তোমাকে সেটা চেঞ্জ করতে হবে দেখাচ্ছে তো আমি ওখানে লিখে দিচ্ছি ভিডিও অপশন বলে আর তোমার উইন্ডোটা পুরো খোলা রাখতে হবে 
আচ্ছা শুধু এখন আমার কাজ যেটা হচ্ছে সেটা হচ্ছে এটাই চালিয়ে যাওয়া নাকি এটা কি করে চালাবে চালানোর পরে ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে যেই বলবে তখন তুমি স্টপ করে দাও হ্যাঁ ওটা স্টপ করে দাও আর তারপরে তেল ফোন মার আর সবাই মোটামুটি এগুলো অফ করে রেখো না না আমি আমি তার আর এই উইন্ডোটার মধ্যেই থাকবো আমি অন্য উইন্ডোতে যাব না আমি অলরেডি স্ক্রিন শেয়ার করে দিয়েছি না 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 এখন চলতে থাকুক না অসুবিধা নেই হ্যাঁ ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে बुजते
good evening everyone we warmly welcome you to the national service team of government general degree college shinmurs organize day 1 of two day seminar entitled covid 19 and social stigma psychological quest and administrative challenges the moment we hear about covid 19 and psychological challenges or social stigma it ignites in us a number of questions and yes we are rightly here to seek answers to all of them at the very onset i request all the fellow participants to kindly switch off your microphones and put your videos off now at the very beginning we would like dr shantanu chakraborty principal of government general degree college shinmo to kindly deliver the welcome address sir over to you chanun to all present here especially to our today's mentor professor dr nilanjana shankar our college's iqs coordinator dr choitali choudhury teachers council secretary shri shomit bhonjo nss coordinator dr sushanto nath and all the members of the nss team participant teachers and students of our and different colleges who are present in this google meet platform and in the youtube live platform many dignitaries are also present or will join soon today is the first day of our webinar organized by nss of our college on a very apt topic of this hour the social stigma to luminous personalities will answer to your queries in these two days that is today and on 2nd september professor dr nilanjana shannal and dr obhijit choudhury the pandemic has caused intense disruption and anxiety about the future amongst almost every section of the people across the globe this situation caused by the pandemic is also responsible for causing pronounced mental health concerns mental illness or mental health issues including suicidal thoughts and feelings in various subgroups of the population throughout the world now in this dark and challenging time of pandemic we are extremely privileged to have a luminous personality like professor dr nilanjana shannal among us who has not refrained herself from performing her duties and responsibilities as a practicing psychoanalyst even in the time like this she is really a persistent source of inspiration for us who is constantly helping others by extending her valuable counseling and guidance regarding mental health issues in the troubling time of this pandemic i on behalf of all the stakeholders of government general degree college shingur welcome her in this interactive session of webinar and extend our heartfelt gratitude for giving us her invaluable time from her busy schedule let her guide us in getting answers to the unsolved questions that appear in our minds thank you ma'am and welcome everybody thank you thank you sir for always being a pillar of support in all our endeavors now we would request professor shomit bhonjo teachers council secretary of government general degree college shingur to kindly say a few words about today's webinar good evening to everyone a very warm welcome to all the participants and the dignitaries i am heartily welcome professor dr niranjana shannal the today speaker to this virtual platform a big thanks to nss unit of government general degree college singur for organizing this webinar on a very important topic the issue of the social stigma is of utmost importance in the present pandemic situation social stigma creates dichotomy between the being normal and acceptable versus being contaminated and undesirable the infodemic characterized by an 
overabundance of news, mixing facts, rumors, and fake news is a very drive, is a key driver of social stigma in our time. When an infectious disease becomes a pandemic, as with COVID-19, people are un understandably frightened and concerned. When this outbreak is caused by a new virus, rumors rampant, the run rampant. Misinformation about COVID-19 has rapidly spread worldwide, promoting the practice of stigmatization. But the stigma affects everyone. Research from the past epidemics has shown that stigma undermines effort to test and treat diseases. People who are worried about being shunned may be less likely to get tested or seek medical care, which increases the infection risk for them and for others. Stigmatized groups are also being deprived of the resources they need to care for themselves and their families during the pandemic. Insufficient knowledge and contradictory information about the transmission of COVID-19 and protective measures such as wearing of face masks in public is associated with increasing the anxiety among the population. People's uncertainty and anxiety has led them to believe this biased and vague information provided by traditional media, social media, for example, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc., and self-proclaimed experts. Thus, every day we are fighting not only the disease, but also misinformation. Maltreatment towards those who have been already infected by COVID-19. Now, I look like to conclude with a positive note that the fear and the anxiety that we are carrying against each other other nowadays will be removed and together we will fight and win this battle. Thank you to all of you. Thank you ma'am for uh, giving the opportunity to listen in this platform. Okay, now I'm concluding. I would like to thank Professor Honcho for illuminating us on social stigma and COVID-19. Now we would request Dr. Choitani Choudhury IQSC coordinator of Government General Degree College, Shimur, to kindly introduce our today's speaker. Over to you, ma'am. Namaskar. On behalf of IQSC, Government General Degree College, Shimur, I welcome you all in this webinar on COVID-19 and social stigma, psychological quest and administrative challenge. We have with us today participants from the different parts of our country. We have with us teachers from our college and other colleges as well. I welcome you all. Our speaker today doesn't need an introduction as her exponential work speaks for her. And I'm extremely fortunate to be able to introduce her, Professor Dr. Nilanjana Shannan. Dr. Nilanjana Shannan is currently a retired professor and former head of the Department of Psychology, University of Calcutta. She is also a practicing psychoanalyst. For the last 37 years, Professor Shannan has imparted training in counseling in various governmental institutions and NGOs, both nationally and internationally, and is consistently involved in mass media programs for awareness generation regarding mental health issues. She is also a columnist in different national dailies and magazines. She has authored a book on positivism, positive psychology, and spirituality. She has edited two books and is a co-author of a test manual. She has over 180 international and national publications, including 28 book chapters to her credit till date. Her research interests include psychoanalysis and psychodynamic psychotherapy, personality, clinical and spiritual psychology, and in interpersonal relationships. She is a co-researcher for the creation of a registered assessment methodology, namely the fairy tale test with Dr. Karina K. 
Paula Goglu, University of Athens, Greece, apart from our membership in other national and international and professional bodies. She is a gold medalist of Taikati University, both at the undergraduate and postgraduate level. She received Jubilee Medic Prize and Jawaharlal Nehru Award from Government of India along with the Suhashini Boshu Memorial Prize from Indian Psychoanalytic Society for excellence of a research paper. She is the recipient of Professor Maya Dev Memorial Award from Asiatic Society, Kolkata, 2012, apart from other awards. A very hearty welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you for gracing this occasion, and thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhuri, for introducing the speaker to all of us. We are extremely honored that we have with us Professor Nilanjana Sanyal for answering to all our queries regarding COVID-19 and social stigma. At the very onset, I would again request all the participants to kindly put your videos off and do not please share your screen and also mute your microphones. We would also like to present that we have received a number of questions for our esteemed speaker today, but at the same time, our Google Meet's live chat box would be open for you all to ask questions and that would be answered by Professor Sanya. So kindly put your questions in the chat box once when the interactive session starts. Uh, Madam, now we would request Professor Sanyal to kindly say a few words. Good evening everybody. <coughs> Respected Dr. Shantanu Chakravarti, the other professors of Government Degree College, Shingor, and the students of this college, the colleagues from other colleges, the dignitaries, and whoever that is present in this webinar. I feel extremely honored to be invited by you all to participate in this program. My present mental status always prompts me to come out with certain things which are the products of my realizations rather than the bookish points that we pick up in order to clear the concepts in the class. Different types of classes, different types of topics of psychology I have taught for last 35 years. But apart from this teaching, since I was all along engaged in practicing psychoanalysis or psychodynamically oriented psychotherapy, the life review and the life contents that are present in all these sessions. I say to my own people that the things that I have learned from the clinical experiences sitting in the clinic itself, I found it nowhere in the books. So even today, when I was approached, I said, if it is an interactive session, I would like to participate because lecturing on a specific topic definitely does create some impact, but the impact is expected to be more when people are participatory in character. We all are there in this pandemic situation, suffering like anything from physical insecurity, psychological troubles, financial crunches and so many different alternations in our social behavior pattern in our socialization processes. The philosophy that we held till date has changed, is slowly changing and will be changed in coming years in our life. So in this crisis moment, if we all share our own trauma, our pains, our queries, our tensions, and if they can be addressed in a psychological language or from a psychological perspective, and if that is being received by the person who has put this question, the psychological quest in this pandemic situation 
would be met to some extent. This is why I asked all of you to have this session as an interactive one. I have come to know that there would be, would be another doctor participating in the next day session. Most probably that would also be an interactive one because he's an unusual speaker. I know of him. He's an extremely renowned doctor. So he would be coming out with solutions from the medical point of view. But since I'm ready with my 37 years of experience, experiences working in the field of clinical psychology, I think I can meet the questions, whatever is there from your side to me. So I would like to have these questions first and then in order to conclude the situation, I may come out with certain other points to deliver. Thank you so much, ma'am. And the impact you assessed is perhaps obviously right because we are flooded with questions from hmm. students and across different se sections of the society. So ma'am, basically I would first begin, uh, so ma'am with your permission, should we get directly to the interactive session now and we should yeah, we take the questions? Definitely. No, okay, you can you can start the interactive session, but Dr. Sina, I would ask you if the students want, we can have the discussions in both English and Bengali. Yes, yes ma'am, yes ma'am. Hmm. We have hmm. questions which are both in English and Bengali. So ma'am, as for hmm. your convenience, you can use alternatively any of the languages to answer the questions. Okay, okay. So the first question has been raised by Neelanjan Day from Department of Psychology only. Uh, he has raised questions which are very basic. First, there are two parts of the question. First is, why is COVID-19 causing so much of social stigma? And to attach to it, what is pointed out is that, that one of the effective measures as pointed out to combat COVID-19 is to maintain social distancing. Now, uh, social distancing and generation of social stigma appears to be both sides of the same coin. So how do we not generate social stigma and still maintain social distancing? How is it very, possible? Very good question. But Nilanjan wants to have the answer in Bengali or English? Ma'am, anything would be all right, I think, for Nilanjan. You can uh, even answer in Bengali, ma'am. It's not a Okay, problem. okay, okay. This particular word, word, social stigma, definitely indicates something negative in our social interaction with others. Social interactions with others. The moment we use the word stigma, that carries a negative connotation where we would like to have distancing from the specific person who is suffering from COVID-19. The first part of Nilan Jones' uh, query is why so much of stigma is being associated with COVID-19. The stigma is associated because the nature of this coronavirus is totally a new thing even in the medical fraternity how it would work on human life, how it would work on human body, nobody knows till date very clearly, very clearly. So many medical people, personnel, they are trying, the researchers are there, the scientists are working in the field in order to get to the point, the exact nature of this coronavirus and how we can develop certain strategies to combat it. So, since this COVID-19 situation is new and its nature is unknown, we have developed enormous fear regarding this. Enormous fear. Each and every single individual, if there is some light of education within him or her, the person has at the back of the mind this fear if by any chance I get this, if by any chance I get this, because the solutions are not readily available. There are so many chronic illnesses in the world, but certain means are available to combat those things. Since the medical units are not assuring us of definite corrective measures, for each and everybody who is being infected with this, we have this unusual 
intensity of fear and anxiety regarding COVID-19. Along with this fear, we are also fearful of our economic conditions because available beds in different types of nursing homes and hospitals are not very are not giving us the assuring picture that if by any chance someone gets it, the person will be placed in a proper place and he or she would receive adequate treatment. So treatment availability is not assured. Depending on the places where the person can get the admission, the financial condition is becoming a concern point for all of us. We are afraid how much would be needed to help somebody to be out of the clutches of COVID-19. All these things together are creating a particular vibe regarding COVID-19 that if it is there in someone, we should shun that person so that no possibility is there that I may get contaminated by the same person. That's why the stigma is being associated with this. The second point that I would like to associate with this stigma is lack of psychological education within us. The moment I shun somebody and try to dissociate myself from there, it is lack of educational life within me. The moment this lack, this inadequacy is there, I'm thinking of myself only. I'm not being identified with the pain of the other person. The lack of identification with the affected person is prompting us to be away from him or her. The moment we feel, if by any chance I get it, I may be in trouble. I'll be in a soup. I do not know where to go, how long it would take to get cured, and even if the cure is available, whether I would be able to afford it or not, all these anxious thought patterns are prompting me to initiate, the, initiate this stigma-oriented behavior pattern towards somebody. Now, the second part of the question, the social distancing and not having the stigma. Stigma is putting a stamp on somebody to abandon him socially. And social distancing is being away from the person, maintaining a physical distance so that the chances of contamination are very, very slim. This is the difference. Social distancing is needed so that the infection, if it is there in the other person, would not be able to reach my body physically. That is social distancing. But social distancing does not mean abandon the person, push the person away from your life, from your social arena, so that you are secure, you are safe, and the other person is unsafe. Okay? Thank you, ma'am. With that, we move on to the second question. It is somewhat obviously related to what you have just said, ah. uh, that it uh, the problem of the recovered patients lie in case of inclusiveness of the society. Mm. Like even we have seen cases when people, the recovered, COVID recovered patients, they have even gone to the extent of committing suicides because they were not, uh, they were suffering from certain social problems, they were not being accepted in society. With that, Shuni Padok has asked a question that what can be done to ensure coexistence of the affected and non-affected? I feel like quoting a particular advertisement I have seen on TV screen. Most probably it has got something to do with a tea advertisement. In this advertisement, two persons are there, most probably a couple, and the lady is bringing three cups of tea in front of the uh, gentle, gentleman. The gentleman is saying, Omit Ishigatse, he is back from the hospital and he is there in that room. I would like to stay distant from him at least for a month. The wife is smilingly look at him, looking at him and offering him the tea. The person is taking the tea but looking at the cup suddenly asks, why the third cup? 
she said it is for Amir. And he has, he is wearing a surprised look on his face. So the lady is answering, Okay, Akka thakte bola hoi chhe, Akka rakte bola hoi. Akka rakte bola hoi. If this attitude is there in us, that okay, someone was sick, someone must be in quarantine for some stipulated period even now, only then we can come out of his fear and be near the person as much as it, as it is possible before quarantine period is over to help the person feel that everybody is there around. If this feeling is being generated from our very spontaneous warmth towards the person, the person will start feeling better and he would be all right within a short while. If we keep on distancing ourselves from these clients, these cases, those people will feel that I am not being accepted, I am not being received even by my family members. When this feeling of being rejected by the near and dear ones is there, one feels like taking the life also. The suicidal thoughts are not only there in the mind, certain suicides are also being committed by a significant number of people that has been reported either on TV or in any other kind of media. So it's there. So what we should do? We should try to identify ourselves with the pain of that person. Not the physical pain, but the social pain that one is suffering from. If I put myself into his or her shoes, if I have enough empathy towards the specific case, and if I feel that had it been so that I was in his position, her position, and meet the same kind of reactions from others, what would I have felt? What would have been my degree of pain? If I can place myself in that state and with enough empathy approach the person, we can help the person get out of this feeling of being rejected, dejected by others and with our kind of warmth being given towards the specific person with the assurances, the supportive words, the supportive actions, we can help the person to get over the trauma that he or she is suffering because of COVID-19 in his life. Yes? So, putting into man's word, it's like uh, we should put ourselves into shoes of other. And I think yeah. with that, man has already answered the question that found in the life chat box raised by Shulagna Chatterjee that how to deal with the interpersonal मोटामुटी <laughs> मोबाइल रिपीटेडलि बोर्डम तो बटे 
বিজনেস নেসেসিটি অস্থিরতা অনিশ্চয়তা থেকে নিজের ভেতরে একটা এমন অস্থিরতা যেটা তারা নিজেকে কোন অবস্থাতেই সংযত করতে পারছে না কারণ কোন নতুনত্ব নেই বাড়ির ভেতরে আমরা তো ছোট ছোট বাড়িতে থাকি যেন একটা বন্ধুদের দেখতে পাচ্ছে না শুধু বড়দের মধ্যেই থাকছে বাড়িতে আরেকটা বাচ্চা থাকলে তার সাথে মাটিটি বেশি করছে এই যে একটা মানসিক অস্থিরতার ছবি আমরা দেখছি সেখানে মোবাইলও কিন্তু এক্সট্রা অস্থিরতা তৈরি করছে তার কারণ এই স্ক্রিন লাইট এক্সপোজার আমাদের নার্ভাস সিস্টেমকে যেরকম ভাবে উত্তেজিত করে এবং যে রেজোনেন্ট এফেক্ট রেজোনেন্ট এফেক্ট থেকে যায় অর্থাৎ মোবাইলটা কিংবা কম্পিউটারটা সামনে থেকে সরিয়ে নিয়ে কিংবা টিভি সুইচ অফ করার পরেও স্ক্রিন লাইট অফ হওয়ার পরে দীর্ঘ সময় স্ক্রিন লাইটে এক্সপোজ হওয়ার পরে তাদের নিজেদের ভেতরে শারীরিক ভাবে যে অস্থিরতার উৎপাদন আমরা দেখতে থাকি সেটাকেও তারা আচরণের দিক থেকে আর ম্যানেজ করতে পারছে না সুতরাং সেখানে বাবা মার প্রশ্ন যেহেতু ডিজিটাল মিডিয়াম ছাড়া এখন আমাদের কাজ করার কোনো সুযোগ নেই কি করব দিতে তো হবে আর একটু বড় যারা তাদের মধ্যে এরকম বাচ্চাও পাচ্ছি যে ক্লাস সিচুয়েশনে প্রেজেন্ট প্লিজ বলে ঢুকে সে ভিডিওটা অফ করে দিচ্ছে ভিডিওটা অফ করে ওখান থেকে বেরিয়ে গিয়ে তারপরে কিন্তু গেম খেলছে এবার মা বা বাবার পক্ষে পিঠের দিকে সারাক্ষণ বসে থাকা সম্ভব না এবং বসে থাকতে গেলে সেটা তার কাছে সামলাতে পারছি না এতদিন যে বলতাম ওটা থেকে সরে থাকা দরকার আজকে আমরাই সেটা হাতে তুলে দিচ্ছি আমাদের এখন বলতে হবে এটা এখন প্রয়োজনের সামগ্রী এটা একটা মিডিয়াম যেটা দিয়ে জীবন তোমাদের লেখা পড়ার জীবন তোমাদের অন্যান্য ক্লাস কেউ গান শেখে কেউ আঁকা শেখে সেগুলো অনলাইন ক্লাসেস হচ্ছে এটা এখন বেঁচে থাকার জন্যে জীবনটা গিয়ে এগিয়ে নিয়ে যাওয়ার জন্যে জীবনের সবকটা জানলা দরজা বন্ধ না করে বাড়ির মধ্যে সম্পূর্ণ বন্দি হয়ে না থেকে পরস্পরের সাথে সেখানেও যে আদান প্রদান হচ্ছে সেখানে মোবাইল বা কম্পিউটার আমাদের একটা হাতিয়ার একটা মিডিয়াম এই মিডিয়ামটাকে আমরা শুধু কাজের জন্যই ব্যবহার করব অন্য কোন জিনিসের জন্য না যদি কেউ ঝোঁক করতে থাকে যে তারপরে একটু ইউটিউব দেখবে কেউ একটু খেলা দেখবে কেউ একটু কার্টুন দেখবে কিছু করবে তাকে একটা সুনির্দিষ্ট সময়ের জন্য নিজেদের সামনে বসিয়ে সেটা পনেরো মিনিট বা আধ ঘন্টার বেশি নয় কিছুতেই আধ ঘন্টার বেশি না দিয়ে তারপরে তার থেকে ওটা সরিয়ে নেওয়া দরকার কিন্তু আমি একটা জিনিস সেখানে যোগ করতে চাই বাচ্চাদের মোবাইল ইউসেজ কম করানোর জন্য বড়দের আরেকটা যেটা করা দরকার তাদের নিজেদেরও মোবাইল ব্যবহারে সংযমের ছবিটা বাচ্চার সামনে তুলে ধরা প্রয়োজন আমরা যখন ওদের বলছি এটা আমাদের কাজের একটা মিডিয়াম হিসেবে আমরা ব্যবহার করব বড়দেরও মাথায় রাখতে হবে যে আমরা শুধু প্রয়োজনে এটা ব্যবহার করব। বাচ্চারা ঘুমিয়ে পড়ার পরে কারো যদি মনে হয় একটা মুভি দেখবে কোন একটা সিরিয়াল দেখছে বা দেখে কেউ সেটা কিন্তু বাচ্চার চোখের সামনে আমরা আদর্শ হিসেবে যদি দেখাই যেটা বড়রা ব্যবহার করতে পারে তোমরা করতে পারো না তাহলে ভুল হবে বড়রা বেশিক্ষণ ব্যবহার করতে পারে সেটাও কাজে ব্যবহার করছে কাজের বাইরে আমাদের এন্টারটেনমেন্টের জন্য ইউজিং দ্যাট অ্যান্ড আস দ্য চিলড্রেন নট টু ইউজ ইট রিপিটেড আলোচনা করি তাদের সেটা শাসনের মধ্যেই বেঁধে রাখার চেষ্টা করি তাহলে উপকার নিশ্চয়ই হবে তাদের কাছ থেকে অনেক ধরনের প্রশ্ন এসছে 
পরীক্ষা দিতে পারবো কিনা এ ব্যাচের পরীক্ষা হবে কিনা পাশ করবো কিনা চাকরি পাবো কিনা এই জায়গাটা এই জায়গাটা তো জীবনের খুব জরুরি একটা জায়গা সেখানে সব বাচ্চাদের একটা কথা বলি ছোটদের যে পৃথিবীতে সবচেয়ে বড় নীতি প্রিন্সিপাল হচ্ছে প্রিন্সিপাল অফ ইন পারমানেন্স নাথিং ইজ পারমানেন্ট ইন লাইফ নাথিং ইজ পারমানেন্ট যদি নাথিং ইজ পারমানেন্ট এইটা লাইফ প্রিন্সিপাল হয় তাহলে কোভিড নাইনটিন কখনোই পারমানেন্ট হতে পারে না ইটস এ পিরিয়ড কিছু শুনিনি আমরা দেখিনি আমরা কখনো এটা নিজেদের কনসেপচুয়াল ফ্রেম এর মধ্যে আনিনি যে এরকম একটা দুর্ভোগের মধ্যে সমস্ত পৃথিবী জড়িয়ে করতে পারে এই যে দুর্ভোগের জায়গাটা আজকে এসে দাঁড়িয়েছে সেটাও সাময়িক এটা মনে রাখতে হবে এটাও সাময়িক কতটা তার সাময়িকতার কতটা লম্বা সেটা নির্দিষ্ট ভাবে এখন আমরা কেউই বলতে পারি না কিন্তু সাময়িক নিশ্চয়ই করে এ সময়ও কাটবে ভ্যাকসিন বেরোবে উন্নতি হবে পরিস্থিতির উন্নতি হবে আমাদের জীবনে আবার নতুন করে হলো ভবিষ্যৎ যখন আমি যে ডেঞ্জারটা চোখের সামনে উপস্থিত আর যে ডেঞ্জারটা আসতে পারে এই দুটো অবস্থায় ভাবছি যেটা সামনে উপস্থিত তাকে তো সুরাহার দেশার মধ্যে নিয়ে যেতে হয় অর্থাৎ যা কারো হয়ে থাকলে চিকিৎসা করে সুস্থ হওয়া সুস্থতার হারও তো অনেক সুতরাং অত ভয় পাওয়ার কি আছে বিশ্বাস রাখা জীবন সম্বন্ধে বিশ্বাস রাখা জীবন আমাদের সবটা উলট পালট করে দেবে না এই যে পরিবর্তন এসেছে এই যে নেতিমূলক একটা নমর্থক পরিবর্তনের পিরিয়ডে ফেজে আমরা দাঁড়িয়ে আছি তারও কিছু মানে আছে জীবনের দিক থেকে সে মানেটাকে আমাদের বুঝতে হবে কিন্তু আপাতত প্যাটার্নটাকে কাটিয়ে ওঠার জন্য আমি দুটো কথা মূলত বলতে চাই একটা অ্যাংজাইটি যখন আসে তখন আমরা বর্তমানে বসে হয় অতীতের কথা কিংবা ভবিষ্যতের কথা ভাবছি উত্তরম হয়েছিল এত টাকা খরচ হয়ে গেছে সেরেছে তার সাথেও জড়িত কতগুলো চিন্তা 
Uh, he wants to ask that madam children with adhd and asd are having a doubly trouble time many behavioral and occupational therapy centers are also providing services so how to deal with this if the problem is asd the primary point that is of concern to uh, take into consideration is they always like to be in a familiar situation sense of familiarity is helpful for them to have some control over their behavior in this pandemic situation since the family patterns have also changed everybody is there at home too many people together sometimes is the children they are being helped with this because they are getting both the parents near them and they feel uh, all right they feel satisfied uh, having them around them but sense of familiarity in each and every aspect what they do the routinized life that they lead if it is not available then it is expected that they would be uh, far more agitated they would have less control there would be lack of sleep there would be uh, lack of submission to uh, instruction and uh, they would try to show their protesting behavior all the time basically the restlessness would be indicated in any kind of behavior that they are meeting up to any kind of stimulation that they are receiving in order to help them in this situation you need to have more time being devoted to them even for adhd children also they need more attention of the uh, adult people around them if they are being attended to if they are being involved in uh, games if they are being uh, told the stories if they are being engaged in playing certain games like carrom if the dining table is being converted into uh, a table tennis board they are not being able to play properly but even then baba is playing with the child ma is trying to have some time for the child good set of food if it is being prepared and offered to them if it is being satisfied to the child the child would be momentarily satisfied and would be less restless so the problems that are being there it cannot be changed altogether but we need to innovate certain things depending on whatever is available in that situation in order to create some novelty so that their attention can be engaged there the moment we try to console them with our soothing behavior pattern we don't scold them repeatedly we do not express our disappointment with their pattern of behavior our frustration regarding the pattern of behavior that they are manifesting if we do not have all these negative features in our behavior repeatedly with our calmness with our soothing approaches to their needs with uh, keeping our timing available to attend attend to their needs only if it is possible to avoid this the situation would be under control to some extent ma'am we have another question uh, presented by parma basu is also an assistant professor of english at government general degree college chimu she yes. wants to know about uh, the about the children with special needs who, mm-hmm. how would they 
cope with these virtual sessions or how do they socialize in absence of uh, the professional bodies? Uh, children with special needs, uh, for them, all the time we really cannot use digital media in order to teach them. The first and foremost uh, important point for them, which is uh, which I'll suggest, is to try to take them out of home for a while. If there is a balcony, an open space, if there is a terrace, an open space, please try to take them there for some time. Children with special needs have special demands in their life pattern. These demands are also a pressure on adults who are dealing with them. Since these people are, uh, they also go to the school and they stay away from home to some extent for some time. The mothers are being spared, other people at home who look after them, they are spared for some time. This pairing situation is no more available for us. We need to have a different kind of mental preparation within ourselves to meet the demands of these people. But there we need sharing. We need sharing. If only a, a, a single person is dealing with a special uh, uh, child with a special need, it would be a Herculean task on his or her part. So if that task is being shared with other members of the family, if cooperative attitude is existing among the family members, then we can address the special demands that they are facing during this time. But the primary point that I have pointed out, that in an open space, they should be taken for a while. They should be shown the interesting books, if it is possible, uh, the books with colorful photographs, uh, the uh, play materials with colors, within them and if you are constantly engaged with them someone or the other it's not a single person but someone or the other should be there to attend to their needs most probably the problems that we are encountering in this situation that would be less and for children with special needs if the digital classes are being arranged and the schools that they go with so many other gadgets that they are asking us to buy and help the child to play with those materials. If these materials have been procured and the instructions have been followed from the special educators, most probably the situation would be under control. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now we move on to the issue of women. Mm -hmm. Women, as we all know, they are always troubled by this dual uh, shift or dual shifts that they have to do one at the home front and at the work front hmm. with work from home starting what has happened is that, that the work front has also come up at this shrink space of home hmm. at the time at this COVID times what we find is that the maids are absent and no hiring helps are available hmm. how to deal with this trouble. That is how to balance, how to maintain an equilibrium for both these fronts. It's extremely difficult for women. Uh, I'm the crude example of this. At this age of mine, and having a severe problem in both the knees, I cannot uh, stand for a long time. I cannot walk a long distance. I cannot take stairs. That is my physical deformity that I have developed for the last almost a decade. Uh, and I take medicines because of that. These medicines are also having their side effects. Even then, at this age, very early in the morning I get up, but I need to take uh, care of my, my hard work that I do every day. Every day. So, it's a double bind situation for us, a double load of work for us, and in the uh, sitting at home, when we are trying to have this professional work to be done, there are also other problems. Other people who are there, they do not keep things in mind and they approach your private space. There also you are being in trouble. But we all try to take as best as possible, closing the door, locking it properly so that I can be there in that room all by myself. 
But that also has its own tone because we are constantly there in front of the screen and uh, working hours are long, very long, because what we teach in the class or what we do in the office, some of the spaces we meet, we move, we go and talk to uh, our colleagues. Somehow, some kind of relaxation also in between, in the in between, intercepted uh, within our work. But working from home situation, in that respect, is a little more difficult for us. Now this load is there, and the load needs to be taken by you. Nothing can be done about that. The more we grumble, the more we tell ourselves, "Oh my God, what a trouble!" How much work is left? I need to do all these things and I have, I develop a bad temper. My body system will revolt. I would not relax. I would not have, I would not have the appetite. I would not have enough sleep. I would feel agitated. My mood would be off. In my interpersonal situation, I would come out with negative reactions to whoever it is. Uh, who is placing, if somebody asks for, a, 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 for an extra cup of tea, in, in that situation, somebody gets very much worked out. Why, why now? If you want to have, you go and have it. So that is disturbing the balance of our social relationship patterns also. The intimacy that we have, the smoothness, the coziness that we have, that is also uh, that also gets disturbed if we feel disturbed all the time because of this. Since this is a situation, as I said, it is a temporary situation, maybe for a few more months we need to take up all these things. Let us try to develop a mental set and attitude that this is a new situation. I would try to arrange the work in a way so that I can manage it by my own self. But in order to have rejuvenation of our energy, I would ask all the women of all ages to try to have some me time, your personal time and personal space, during which you would do certain things that would please you. That is of your choice. You may listen to music, you may read a book, you may lie down, you may chat with your friends, whatever it is that you want to do, the me time would be the cover on the pain that we are taking up. If it is there, that will revitalize, rejuvenate our energy to take up more things in life. And with this extra loads of work, extra tons of work, when we do all these things and come to a day's closure, if we try to tell ourselves, auto suggestion, that I could do it, the day went off well, this is a positive affirmation to my own work set. So, setting an attitude to take up this challenge, doing it, having some me time in between, and with the closure of the day, if we can affirm that I have done all the work today that I have set the program uh, early in the morning, or some of it has been left out and managed to do it either tomorrow or day after tomorrow. With this kind of positivity, positive freedom in our mind, I think all of us would be able to carry on. You talked about uh, uh, how to deal with uh, like special child, that is what can be, what can be done to them. We yeah. have a question from Dr. Deepla Prakurupoti, Assistant yeah. Professor of Fortune in Nine College for Women. He has yeah. presented that being the parent of a special child, how do we manage our mental health in time of this COVID-19? I would ask uh, this specific person to Keep in mind that your pain, your stress, your uh, not feeling so good about the situation should not be kept within yourself. That should be shared with others. In this COVID-19 situation, 
if you can develop a support group, the parents of children with special needs, if they form a support group through WhatsApp or any other means, and sometimes you keep some time to talk to others, you bring out your pain to them, you bring out your frustrations to them, you bring out your helplessness, and they also share the same thing. When you find that so many people together, you people are suffering, your pain, your suffering would have a generalization. When your pain is generalized, it reduces, its intensity is reduced. The intensity gets reduced. So, trying to develop some help for your own self, as well for others, as well as for others who are in the same mood with you, you should try to develop a support group system. This is one. And the second thing, as earlier I said, you must tell your family members that you would take the maximum burden, but sometimes they should take some initiative of looking after this child so that you get some time all for yourself. When you can relax a bit according to your own choice, you are probably less felt by you. मैनिफेस्टेशन कि रिगार्डिंग मानुषी शारीरिक शासन चरम 
এই খানটায় ডক্টর সিনা আমি আসবো ওই যেটা আমাদের পরের দিকে অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেটিভ স্ট্র্যাটেজি বলে একটা পয়েন্ট আপনাদের আছে সেই পার্টটার মধ্যে কোভিড পেশেন্ট থাকলে পরে আসলে বাড়িগুলোর মধ্যে সবসময় যে তাকে একটা আলাদা ঘরে আইসোলেট করে রাখা যাচ্ছে তা কিন্তু নয় কারণ ততটা করে জায়গাও সব জায়গা নেই প্রথম ভাবতে হবে যে কোভিড পেশেন্ট মানে কিন্তু জিনিসটা অনেক দূর বলিয়ে যাচ্ছে এবং একটা ভয়ঙ্কর কোনো অবস্থায় আমরা বলে যাচ্ছি সবসময় তা কিন্তু না অল্প সিমটম এর মধ্যে দিয়ে কিংবা সেই রকম প্রমিনেন্ট সিমটম ছাড়াও কিন্তু কোভিড পজিটিভ আমরা দেখছি তাই যদি হয়ে থাকে তারা তখন বাড়ির মধ্যে থাকলেও নিজেদের বলতে হবে হবেই এরকম কোনো গ্যারান্টি নেই কিন্তু যদি হয় দেখা যাবে অর্থাৎ চ্যালেঞ্জটাকে টেক আপ করার মানসিকতা যদি আমার মধ্যে থাকে তাহলেও কিন্তু আমার ভেতর থেকে একটা জোর আসে এবং আমরা এই ভাইরাসটাকে এত ভয় পাচ্ছি বলেও এটা আমাদের পেরে ফেলছে অনেক বেশি ভয় পাওয়ার মতো বস্তু সে বিষয় নিঃসংকোচে নিঃসন্দেহে কিন্তু এটা উঠে যে আমি যদি নিজেকে বলি হুলে পরে আমি ঠিক সুস্থ হয়ে উঠব তাতে আমরা দেখছি ছিয়ানব্বই বছরের বয়স্ক মানুষও কিন্তু হসপিটাল থেকে আবার সুস্থ হয়ে বাড়ি আসছে চুরানব্বই বছরের মানুষ বয়স্ক মানুষ হসপিটাল থেকে কোভিড হওয়ার পরেও বাড়ি ফিরে আসছে তাহলে নিজের মনের মধ্যে যদি একটা সাহসের জায়গা রাখি এবং যা যা ব্যবস্থা নেওয়া দরকার অর্থাৎ সাবধানতা যা যা নেওয়া দরকার সেটা যদি সেই প্রোটোকল গুলো আমরা মেনটেন করে চলতে পারি যেমন বাড়িতে যদি সেই পেশেন্ট থাকে তাকে যতটা আলাদা করে রাখা যায় তার খাওয়ার জিনিসপত্র গুলো তার ব্যবহারের জিনিসপত্র গুলো একটু আলাদা করে রাখা নিজেদের স্যানিটাইজেশন বেশি ইউজ করা সবসময় মাস্ক পরে থাকা এই যে বয়স্ক লোকেরা আগে প্রশ্ন বলছেন মাস্ক পরতে চাইছে না মাস্ক পরলে ওদের কষ্ট হয় সেগুলো দেখতে হবে কিন্তু বাড়ির মধ্যে যদি কেউ হয় তাকে যত্ন করা তার খাওয়া দাওয়া সব জিনিসে যত্ন করা তবে তার নিজের ব্যবহৃত বস্তু যদি নিজে পরিষ্কার করে নিতে পারে সেইটা ভালো এবং যদি সম্ভব হয় একটা টয়লেট যদি তাকে দেওয়া যায় যদি না দেওয়া যায় তাহলে সেই টয়লেট সে ব্যবহার করার পরে সম্পূর্ণ স্যানিটাইজ করে তারপরে আবার বাকিদের ব্যবহার করা উচিত যে সোশ্যাল ওয়ার্কাররা আক্রান্ত হচ্ছেন সেখানে একটা কথা বলি এই যে স্ট্র্যাটেজি যে বলছিলাম যে কি স্ট্র্যাটেজি আমরা নিতে পারি সেখানে আমরা যখন কেউ কাউকে মারছে আমি পড়াতেই বলেছি ইট ইস ল্যাক অফ এডুকেশনাল লাইফ উইথ ইন আওয়ার সেলফ যখন অশিক্ষিত মনের প্রকোপ তখনই আমরা অনেকক্ষণ ধরে তার কষ্ট হচ্ছে কেউ তার কাছে যায়নি কিছু করেনি কারণ হয় পাশে আমার হয় সেই জায়গাটা থেকে কখনো আমরা ভাবতে পারছি না সেই সহমর্মিতা আমাদের আসছে না যে আমি যদি ওই জায়গাটায় থাকতাম তাহলে কি হতো তারা যখন প্লাজমা দিয়ে অন্য মানুষকে বাঁচাচ্ছে অন্য মানুষদের সুস্থ হতে সাহায্য করছে মৃত্যু পথযাত্রী সেই মৃত্যুর হাত থেকে যখন তাদের ফিরিয়ে আনা যাচ্ছে তখন তাদেরও তো একটা অবদান আছে তাদেরও তো অবদান আছে এবং আরো একটা জিনিস ভাবা দরকার কোভিড নাইনটিন কেউ যেচে নিয়ে আসছে না মানুষ যেচে কোথাও কতগুলো কু অভ্যাসের থেকে কিছু রোগ তৈরি করা আগে আগে এমন অনেক অসুখ হয়েছে যেমন এইচআইভি যখন প্রথম এইচআইভি এইডস তখন মানুষ তাদের ধারে কাছে যেত না ছুঁতো না ব্রাত্ত ছিল তারা কিন্তু কোভিড নাইনটিন কেউ ইচ্ছাকৃত ভাবে নিজের জীবনে টেনে আনছে না ঘটনায় যদি কারো হয় সেটা তার দুর্ভাগ্য সেই দুর্ভাগ্যকে জয় করেও সে যখন সুস্থতার রাস্তায় পা দিচ্ছে বা রাখার চেষ্টা করছে তখন সমবেত ভাবে তাকে আমাদের সাহায্য করা দরকার তাই সোশ্যাল ওয়ার্কারদের যদি কেউ মারে সেইখান থেকে আমাদের শাসনের ব্যবস্থা অর্থাৎ পুলিশের সাহায্য নেওয়া এবং সেই রকম ভাবে তাদের দৃষ্টান্তমূলক শাস্তির কিছু ব্যবস্থা করলে পরে 
তখন তাদের সেই ধরনের আচরণ গুলো বন্ধ হবে বলে মনে করি অনেক ধন্যবাদ দেবনারায়ণ রায় বাবু ঝাড়গ্রাম রাজ কলেজ থেকে উনি প্রশ্ন করেছেন যে ওনার মায়ের বয়স পঁচানব্বই প্লাস উনি সুস্থ কিন্তু ওনারা বাড়ির থেকে যখন বেরোন অন্যান্যরা তখনই উনি অস্থির হয়ে পড়ছেন ওনার মা আর কি অস্থির হয়ে পড়ছেন কি সমাধান যদি একটু বলে দেন আচ্ছা মা অস্থির হয়ে পড়ছেন শুধু নিজের জন্য না বাড়ির লোকেদের জন্যও কারণ উনি মনে করছেন বাইরে গেলে পরেই করোনা ধরে ফেলতে পারে কোভিড চলে আসতে পারে তাহলে কেউ আক্রান্ত হতে পারে সেটাও তার একটা দুশ্চিন্তা পঁচানব্বই বছরের মা যদি হয়ে থাকে সবার সম্বন্ধেই তার স্নেহ এবং দুশ্চিন্তা অঙ্গাঙ্গি ভাবে জড়িত আছে সেই মাকে বোঝাতে গিয়ে কেউ বাড়ির বাইরে গেলে সেটা তার কাছ থেকে যতটা সরিয়ে রাখা যায় তত্ত্ব হিসেবে মানে ইনফরমেশনটা যাতে উনি না পান সেইটা চেষ্টা করতে হবে এবং যদি কেউ বাইরে যায় তাতে ওনার যে ভয় হচ্ছে যে তারা সেই জিনিসটা ক্যারি করে আনতে পারে তাই তাকে একটু আলাদা করে যদি রাখা হয় এবং তাকে যারা দেখভাল করছেন তারা মূলত যদি বাড়িতে থাকেন যেমন আমি বললাম আমার একটা শারীরিক ত্রুটি আছে আমি ইমিউনো কম্প্রোমাইজ পার্সন সেইটার জন্য এই পাঁচ মাসের পাঁচ মাসই আমি বাড়িতে পাঁচ মাসের পুরো পাঁচ মাস সময়টাই আমি বাড়ির মধ্যে আছি এরকমও তো কিছু মানুষ আছেন যারা একদিনের জন্যও বাইরে যাননি যারা বাইরে যাচ্ছেন না মূলত বাইরে যাচ্ছেন না তারাই যদি মায়ের কাছাকাছি থাকেন যে অন্য যারা বাইরে যাতায়াত করছে তারা মায়ের ঘরে ঢুকছেন না মায়ের কাছে আসছেন না এই রকম অবস্থা যদি মেনটেন করা যায় বাড়িতে তাহলে ওনার দুশ্চিন্তা কিছুটা কম করা যাবে আরেকটা জিনিস বলি যদি মায়ের এই বয়সে খুব বেশি রকম অস্থিরতা দেখা যায় কোভিড নাইনটিন নিয়ে যেটা উনি সামলাতে পারছেন না তাহলে সেই মানসিকতার থেকেই কিন্তু তার শরীর খারাপ হতে পারে কারণ টেনশন লেভেল সেখানে বেড়ে যাচ্ছে সেক্ষেত্রে যদি মনে হয় জিনিসটা সীমার বাইরে যাচ্ছে যতটা হলে স্বাভাবিক মনে হয় সেই সীমাটা অতিক্রম করছে তার ভয় তার দুশ্চিন্তা তখন তাহলে একটু সাইকেট্রিস্ট কাউকে কনসাল্ট করে সামান্য একটু মেডিসিন দিলে পরে তার শান্ত অবস্থা বেশি থাকবে তাতে তার শরীর খারাপ হবে না বরঞ্চ শরীর ভালো থাকবে রেমিডিস <laughs> for our mental health so that we can receive ample strength to fight with this pandemic ma'am if you could please suggest us with such yeah. easy way dr remedies. sena uh, from the very beginning i am constantly talking about the impermanence law of impermanence and i'm asking everybody to accept this fact as periodic in character this phase would be definitely over in our life definitely over it is not going to be permanent uh, situation for all of us throughout our life no it is not going to be like that so changes are expected changes will definitely come since if we, since this hope is a positive feature of our mind if we try to have this hope within ourselves and consider this situation to, to be a negative phase throughout the world we would be in a position to develop our resilience our acceptance of the situation as a temporary period as a temporary phase would prompt us to wait for good days to come if this resilience we develop with our own mental strength with our virtues the virtues which are present within ourselves then the problem you were talking about aggression anxiety other negativities in our behavioral pattern which has become very common because we are not liking this situation covid 19 is imparting a very very important educational content for us 
human population in phylogenetic order was always and is even now at the top point. Human beings are the toppers in phylogenetic order because we have improved advanced cognitive layers being available to us. Since we are intellectually, cognitively, the highest quality being in this earth, we had developed an ego, a hunkar, that being for beings, everything is possible. A virus is showing us the fact nature is far more powerful. Earth is far more powerful. Air is far more powerful than human being. Nature does not require us, but we require nature. We require the help of nature to save us, to enrich our life, to have the health point being initiated and maintained. So if we give up this ego, automatically there would be a reduction, significant amount of reduction in our aggression. Aggression is basically the cry within. When we are expressing our aggression, actually we are crying. Why? Because my I, the self, is wanting something to take place, wanting something to happen in life. I want the fulfillment of my wishes, my desires, my demands, my needs. Since my needs are not being met, my demands are not being fulfilled, my desires are not meeting its uh, satisfaction point, that's why we are having this aggravation. The aggravated condition is prompting us to come out with negative features in our behavior pattern in the form of either anxiety or destructive attitude, aggressive attitude, etc., etc. We must understand this I within us is just like a bubble in this whole world, just like a bubble. So the existence of I is meaningful because of certain things in our life, because of the situational factors in our life. If a person is counted, he is counted, he is significant in an area. But the moment the person is no more, it affects only a handful of people or a number of people. But it is not beyond conception point. The moment we expect my things to be to have the fulfillment, I would encounter all these negative emotions. The moment I become a giver, I become compassionate, I develop forgiveness, I develop helpful attitude towards other people, towards this whole world in general, those positive vibes within me will protect me will protect my positive mental health and will put me in a platform where the sense of well-being would be established within myself. These are the tips that I can share with all of you because I believe in all these things. I practice all these things in my personal life and I can come out with this realization if through these discussions some points are being generated and given to you from my side, if it is being well received by you, situation would be much, much better, not only for you, but for all of us together. Ma'am, we can't thank you enough. Our chat box are flooded with uh, gratitude towards your excellent lecture. I think thank we have you. got somewhat a mental solace after hearing you for an hour or more. We hope I, on behalf of the college, extend extreme gratitude to you for helping us in such a way in this trying times. Ma'am, we hope that we will be continually being associated with your presence in various efforts and endeavors of our college. With thanking ma'am, I would like to officially come to an end of this interactive session and I would request NSS uh, our NSS units program officer, Dr. Shushantanath, 
to kindly deliver the vote of thanks before that let me uh, have the opportunity of thanking you all yes, for giving yes, me the opportunity surely. to be with all of you and i tried my level best to give you the answers to whatever questions that has been put to me if it comes to your help in any way i'll be very happy to know about that thank you thank you all for listening to me ma'am it's more a thanks that we should be extending from us to you for being such a mental relief for listening and giving us such a mental relief in this times with that we uh, officially request our nss units program officer dr shushantana to kindly deliver the vote of thanks thank you dr shop ma'am good evening to everybody Uh, NSS unit of Government General Delhi College Shinur has performed different types of social work throughout the year with the people at village level and also conduct different types of seminar workshops as regular program and special camp throughout the year. In this critical situation of COVID-19, NSS unit of this college is continuing its duty by preparing different awareness video with the volunteers, students. and teachers of the college this webinar is a part of the activity thank you professor nilanjana channel we are grateful to you that you have accepted our request and participate with us in such a interesting and attractive interaction session you have enlightened some unexplored areas of this topic which will help us to overcome our psychological constraint not only during this pandemic situation but also in future i am extending my thanks to the principal government general degree college shingur for his encouragement to organize this program i am thankful to dr choitali choudhury iqsc coordinator and mr somit bhanjo teacher council secretary of this college thank you uh, thanks to dr pikash sin also assistant professor of sociology for conducting this program with her enthusiasm I am grateful to all the members of NSS unit for their support in doing different programs throughout the year. Actually, uh, we consider this unit as a team, not as individual. I am uh, extending my thanks to all other colleagues of our college for their support to make the program successful. Finally, we are very much thankful to all the participants of our state and other state of states of India who has joined and make this program successful. thank you and uh, we will meet uh, again on 2nd uh, september with another distinguished person speaker dr robijit choudhury as the continuation of our webinar thank you for all stay safe stay healthy thank you madam thank you ma'am thank you ma'am okay okay you are all welcome so i'm off now thank okay. you madam for engaging okay. us in our psychological quest we are here again as dr nath has said that we are here again we will be here again on 2nd september for the administrative challenges to take a look into that so for now on we officially end the day one for the two days seminar the about covid-19 and social stigma psychological quest and administrative challenges Okay. we are thankful to all the participants and our esteemed speaker and all the dignitaries who have been present here thank you all namaskar namaskar